Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. Today, I'm chatting with Tara Wadby, head of school at Riffa Views International School in Bahrain. Tara is an inspirational leader who lives and breathes the mission of her school. I'm particularly excited to share this conversation with Tara because she is facilitating our next cohort of the Cotail program. Cotail is our Certificate of Educational Technology and Information Literacy. Stay tuned to the end of the video to hear more about why Tara is so passionate about Cotail and why you should join our next cohort. In this episode, we explore one of the initiatives that Tara is most excited about, Ignite Day. This non-traditional school day placed in the middle of the week provides many opportunities for all community members to engage in personalized learning. It's also a perfect example of completely rethinking the way learning can look in a future forward school. In this spotlight episode, we highlight the process that the team at Riffa Views followed to ensure this large scale change was as successful as possible with all community stakeholders. In the full episode, Tara shares all about the structure of Ignite Day, along with the leadership elements that are so critical in creating an innovative and future thinking school. To hear the full episode, subscribe to Coach Better wherever you get your podcasts. And to learn more about Cotail and all of our professional learning opportunities, check out EnduroLearning.com. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Better podcast. I am super excited to be here with Tara because as head of school, you have a lot of influence over the direction of literally everything at your school. So I am super excited to chat with you about how you're shaping innovation and coaching and learning at Riff Reviews. And I've just totally st stolen your whole introduction, which I didn't mean to do. Um, but before we get into that, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your education background and how you got to where you are today. Yes. So I um, started off teaching special ed, actually. Um, and I was originally going to be an early, like early childhood special needs. Um, but I think having that special needs background and then the EIL kind of informed me as a strategist more than a content person. And so, what, you know, whether I was teaching special ed or regular ed or, or in leadership, strategies and skills have always been um, more important to me than content. And just to like throw in there, you're a Cotail graduate, so you have all these varied expertise in all different areas. And I know you're bringing all of that together into your leadership at Riff of Views. What are you super excited about in your school either like this academic year or generally in the moment or something that you're looking forward to, what's exciting to you in terms of your school at this moment in time? We started something called Ignite Day this year. And Ignite Day was the, probably one of the most brilliant examples of co-creation that I've ever been a part of. Ignite Day for everyone involves intramurals. So we're trying to build community and team and leadership and, and athletic ability as well. Um, confidence, you know, like we want everyone to be active and, and confident and participating in and, and team kind of team sports or, or that sort of thing. So everyone does intramurals in bands. Everyone has like um, in secondary, we have advisory on those days and we have clubs and committees. Where it shifts then is in the secondary, it's an opportunity for personalized learning seminars that are like really short, like four week sound bites. It's like when you're talking about micro PD or micro classes, they're like, the bulk of Ignite Day in secondary is a two and a half hour seminar and we have strands and so the students can then start badging in those strands. So we have like a wellness strand, a leadership strand, a communication strand, and a design, innovation and design strand. And so um, students start that in sixth grade and we want like a, um, a smorgasbord, we want them to try every strand. But as they go into seventh and eighth grade, they can badge and they can earn bronze badges um, in each strand or they can go for advanced badges like silver and gold, or they can, as they head into high school, sign up for like a year-long cohort, kind of like Cotel, where they're doing same group of 15 students together, 
um, we're gonna we're gonna launch that next year as a proof of concept with a leadership strand um, and an application process. And so we're all building towards like an, a graduate showcase. Okay, I have a clear picture. Thank you. That's really helpful. So this is amazing. You started this this year, if I'm understanding that right. So you're just at the end of this academic year. This is a huge, massive shift in basically everything that you think school can be. This is something that coaches have to deal with all the time, is helping support teachers through massive change that could be scary, intimidating, tons of extra work, all those things that come with change. So how, as the leader and with your coaching staff, anyone who helped you, how did you manage this huge change with your staff where you implemented, you kind of, it sounds almost like you came up with the idea and implemented it at the same time. Yeah, we, yeah a little bit. We came up with the idea, like we started thinking about the idea probably October, November of 2018. Okay. We pitched it to our school-wide leaders team. So we have our senior leadership team, then we have an expanded school-wide leaders team. So we started p pitching the idea in different teams, parent council, school-wide leaders, um, and then we got volunteers to join like the Ignite team. So we had, um, you know, it, it, probably a team um, of 10 to 12 people who met regularly to put it together um, and shared the workload and, had, and brought feedback from different stakeholders and different perspectives. That was in the secondary. And the elementary then um, uh, had, uh, had a separate team working on what it would look like in the elementary. Um, lots of conversations, um, smaller group workshops, very few like whole faculty meetings, I mean, because really the work gets done in the smaller teams and groups. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was overwhelming. I mean, definitely at the start of the year, we were all overwhelmed by change, but it was a positive change. and and. What was remarkable was how, how much our students and our parents took to it. So it was really interesting because then it makes it all worthwhile, right? You're doing something that's meaningful and worthwhile. And so this year, everyone like did the same thing. We had, we had the Arabic enrichment piece for like up until third grade, the electives four and five, and then everyone in secondary did the same thing. But I've just emailed you um, the visual Thank of you. it. And, and so you can, it shows the kind of pathway. So we created an infographic and shows the pathways. Oh, the other thing we did too, we had, we hosted, we do an annual world cafe now. Um, and so instead of doing town halls that are very question and answer format, we do it. We do a world cafe with kind of always a future vision. So like this year, actually ignite day was almost planned in the world cafe from the 2018, 19 school year, because we got all the feedback, for example, parents overwhelmingly wanted communication as a strand mm. and public speaking. And I mean, they were noting really very real differences um, in, in or things that they felt were significant that the students didn't necessarily get um, from regular school. And the other thing that was interesting, we did a hopes and dreams for our children. Actually, we did it with students, parents, and um, so like in five years, 10 years, 15 years, like, where do you want your child to be? Mm -hmm. And overwhelmingly, like, there was not a single parent who said, like, I want them to go to Harvard and, and get, you know, I mean, that might be something that's a nice thing, but they wanted confidence, joy, and happiness to fulfill their dreams and move forward in their life and be happy. So I think, you know, it's a testament to our community that, that we already had that kind of vision where people are coming here for the learning, but also for the bigger piece of, of how I want my child to end up. Um, but, but in terms of, and I think I've rambled away from your coaching question. Um, I'll bring it back, I don't think, worry. <laughs> yeah, I think providing a lot of one-to-one -one support and a lot of meeting time. Um, and then just giving, I think the biggest thing, permission to fail. Hey, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then we'll, we'll try something else, you know. Um, and, and collecting lots of feedback along the way. Um, and holding open forums. But also pushing forward. Also saying, okay, so this didn't work. What, what next? You know, we're not going to just quit now. Like you fail forward. You don't fail and then stop. Okay. So I'm hearing, to summarize what I'm hearing, there were smaller teams that started thinking about this and that kind of grew out to bigger groups and then came back again to a smaller team to actually kind of get the work done. So what I think is really interesting about this, when you're thinking about change management from a like, large scale level, and even as like a coach when you're working with school leaders, 
there has to be some of that big picture conversation with larger groups, but the idea that it's small, small teams that get things done and lots of conversations with opportunities for feedback in that small setting is what pushed this forward more effectively than having a whole staff meeting, for example, and saying, we're going to do X, here's all the details, everyone has to suffer through it. And I feel like what, what I'm hearing from that really resonates to another conversation I had um, with an, another with Alison Rodman, actually, which probably will be released before this podcast, but she talks about the importance of having the right people in the right room at the right time. And she's thinking about it from a professional learning perspective that we always feel like everyone has to be involved in professional learning, but actually maybe not everyone has to be in every single opportunity because maybe it's not the right opportunity for right then. And what I'm hearing from you is that you were very careful about making sure the right people were in the room at the right time to have these conversations, to provide the feedback, to consolidate the learning, and move forward, whether it was failing forward or success forward, to move forward, and then also still sharing that out to a wider, to the wider community so everyone knows what's happening. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's conversation, you will love the Cotail program. It's a five course, one and a half year credential program designed to help you make the most of the technology you and your students have access to. We have had thousands of graduates over 15 years running this certificate, and we know people love it. And to give you even more of a taste of how great the Cotail program is, today I'm sharing a video from our next cohort facilitator, Tara Wadby. Hi, I'm Tara Wadby, and I'm a proud Cotail graduate. I graduated from the first online cohort in 2013, and Cotail was really one of the most transformative educational journeys I've ever been on. I have done lots of online programs and courses, and at the same time that I was doing Cotail, I was also finishing my MFA. And so I remember vividly taking two courses in one semester, the final Cotail course, where I was reflecting, reading, completely engaged in my final project, which was all inspired by what I wanted to do and how I wanted to impact and how I could use my learning from Cotail, versus my course, which was more traditional, still very meaningful because I was interested in it, but just a lot more hoops to jump. And so what I would say is that Cotel really helped me to understand who I am as a learner and what I want to do, take what I'm learning and integrate it into my practice and my profession and my personal being. And it also just opened up the world for me. And I know that Cotel has evolved over the years to continue to stay relevant so that it continues to open up the world for others. So as a graduate, I can say that it truly was a life-changing, transformative experience. And that is why I'm so happy to be facilitating the online cohort beginning in February 2021 so that I can be a part of helping others transform their practice and their journey. Uh, so Cotel is an ongoing, sustainable, fantastic um, journey of learning, inspiration, reflection, um, but ultimately you take what's happening and what you're learning and you make it relevant to your contest so that you can have a greater impact on your students and on our profession of education. So take it from a proud graduate, uh, someone who is continuing to be inspired by Cotel many, many years later, and I hope to see you in the next online cohort.